Go all this way. Um, crown of righteousness. Second Timothy 4, Victor. Okay. Crown of rejoicing. Soul winner's crown. <clears throat> First Thessalonians two. <coughs> Nineteen and twenty. Start 17. But we, brethren, being taken from you for a short time in presence, not in heart, endeavor the more abundantly to see your face with great desire. Wherefore we would have come unto you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. Did you hear that, Charismatics? Satan hindered the Apostle Paul from getting where he wanted to get when he wanted to get there. I guarantee you ain't batting in his league. For what is our hope, our joy, or crown of rejoicing? Are not even you in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? For you are our glory and joy. So the birthing of this church and the winning of souls here was their glory and joy. So you have the crown of rejoicing, which is a soul winner's crown. The Bible says, he who wins souls is wise. And so Jesus paralleled the wise and the foolish builder, one that heard the word of God and kept it, did it, obeyed it, and the other one heard it but didn't do it. One wise, one foolish. So if he who wins souls is wise, then is it mandatory then that you win a soul before you get there? Or is this a Optional crown. Would you say that to an apple seed if you planted it in the ground? It's, 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 oh, you said not optional. Yeah, okay. not optional. I don't want you to produce fruit. The sole purpose of planting it in the ground is to do what? Produce fruit. It goes back to the scripture of some seed, some water. So you don't even, you may not even know what souls you one. Because the cedar, the water, and the harvester are one and the same. As far as your labor is concerned. But still back to the question. Huh? Huh? Of course, then again, through his actions later on down the years, maybe somebody came to Christ through his action of, you are the Christ. Somebody heard it, saw it. That's what I was going to say. Mm -hmm. What? <laughs> 
Oh, I guarantee you that the thief on the cross had some right. seed and watering done. Right. Yeah. He had to have heard about him mm -hmm. somewhere along. No. No, that he did some seeding or watering. He's talking about. Is that about what you're saying? No. Oh, that somebody. Somebody to him. him. Okay. Yeah. But. Christ just Anthony. happened to be the. No, I was saying he did some seeding or watering by anybody that heard him say that to Christ. Christ. When he was on Possibly. the cross. Okay, gotcha. That's what I'm saying. Okay. We don't know who was around, what they heard. And what they saw. Right. And how it affected them. Yeah. Right. I mean, the countenance of a man changes. But is that acceptable for you? Can you use the thief on the no. cross oh. to legitimize your lack of winning souls? Mm -hmm. no. If you're obeying, you are doing. You're doing that same thing to different people as you're going. You're speaking about the Word of God. You're speaking about the things that are affected in your life through God. And that, thus you are sowing seeds and you are watering. You may not always see the harvest, but there will be a day. We're even told not to boast about the harvest. Right. But your question was, and is it mandatory? Why we live our lives. Mm -hmm. Is it? I say yes. I say yes. I say yes, it is mandatory. Because if it wasn't, it would be so easy for anyone to crawl under a rock and just get away from the world and people. And is it? Just not even. Yeah, where are you going to make your money? Produce fruit or be cut down. Right. Cast into the fire. Removed. The longer you're here, the more responsible. You know, if you come if you come into the venture at six AM, start work instead of five PM, what's required of one over the other? More fruit. It's my Jason. Oh, uh, when, when he said he said 30, 60, and 90, he didn't say zero, right? Right. Some zero, some 30, some 60, some 90. He didn't say even four, it was just three. <laughs> yeah, but that's not talking about this. Oh, right, right. By their fruit, they will know them. It's not just souls mourn. What did we talk about was the fruit on the tree? Works. Deep. What kind of works? Righteous. Which is obedient, obedient. works. Obedience. By, by their obedient works, by their obedient things that they do, proving they're legit in their repentance, you'll know them. You'll know. And I'm telling you from experience, you don't need five minutes to talk to anybody, pastor, lay person. You don't need that long to find out where they are. Really? You know, I just, I didn't even met her, but this 90-year-old plus woman that, that's befriended Donna at the market just blessed my soul over her. Because she's a berry. Because she's hungry to know more than what she even knows. She's not some snake snapping at you. Or somebody that's saying they're Christ and they're what, what, what are you doing now? What, what's this? What's, what, what's, what's this face now? I mean, she's just giddy.
what if she'd kept her mouth shut and this woman never overheard her talking to somebody else and she, she steps in and gets into the conversation? You never know who's listening. Never. Might not be the one that you're eyeball to eyeball with. Maybe a little old short Nicodemus. Click, click over. <laughs> Zacchaeus. 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 Yeah. <laughs> 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 Maybe he climbed up on top of your tent canopy. Or somebody's just as lost as lost can be, but yet they testify. Where are they? Well, they'll be back. It's a religious holiday for them. Don't even know what Tabernacles or Atonement is, but yet they're spreading forth the gospel and don't even know it. Mm -hmm. Because of what they have heard continually, week after week, year after year. Okay. So, what's the answer? It's mandatory. Well, we still have a yes from you. Did this say in the text that all of these people in the church at Thessalonica finished their race and got to the end not disqualified? No. But they got a start, didn't they? Yeah. Even if the start is just you testifying. But you can't testify that which you don't open your mouth and speak. What is the gospel? The gospel is Jesus Christ. What is that? The Word. And he came. And he got back everything we lost that Adam gave away. I know the verse adds to the pot, you know, if you deny me before man, then. I'll deny you yeah. before the Father. If you deny the word of God, like you just did. If you're fearing speaking the truth, you are in unbelief. Those in unbelief are not getting it. Remember what we what we read about exhausting all efforts? Was that last week? Yeah. Right. What you said today too. And you'll not see I haven't I haven't instigated any conversations with Dean at the market the, at all this year. He's brought them up. Because I pretty much exhausted everything that I needed to do. And he still had a wall. So, out of the five, what's your possibilities? Right. Right, you are. 
Not everybody has the possibility of five. No. Mm-hmm. Right. Because some people don't get killed. They still have the possibility. And some people you. aren't elders in the church. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. That's about the only one that's not possible by everybody. You have to be an elder to get that one. But an elder can die. A, a young person can die. Anybody can die for Christ. Not that they're gonna, but anybody can, so it's possible to get. Does that make sense? Yeah. I, I, yeah, I think there's another way, but yeah. Of course. Corruptible? Stuff? Even if you're striving for the incorruptible, you better be striving not to have smell smoke on you. Are you like the Levites and Miriam and all the unrecorded instances of the same thing? You will stink for a thousand years. That is a reality. That's far better than hell. Total separation from God. The people avoid trying to be avoid trying to be embarrassed. Mm-hmm. You do. You go out of your way. Not to embarrass yourself. Well, if that's true, then why not so much more to not stink? That you get in your assignment, you run with all your heart, mind, body, soul, and strength, and you get to the end without getting disqualified, and it's going to get purged by fire, but it ain't going to burn. And nobody has to ask you a thing for a thousand... You won't have to ask, answer the same question for a thousand years? What well, didn't you finish? Did you get it at the market? The same question. Over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. And you answer with a smile like it's the first person that has asked you that question. What didn't you finish? Psalm 51. You had an assignment. Mm. Who wants to volunteer an answer? I will, sir. Call and roll. <laughs> um, once it's restored in that boy of your salvation, I'm guessing he wants to be restored to when he was in. God's favor or not. Woo hoo top! Well, in his heart, I guess. <laughs> so, what does that say then about when we're in sin? Not to let it linger, be quick to repent. Not joyful. You, you can't. Impossibly. You can't have the joy of the Lord and be in sin. Not going to happen. You can have a false grin on your face and jump up and down 
in yes. church service and do all this other stuff. As soon as you walk outside, get in your car and slam the door, it's, I'm glad that's over. All the front. I can honestly say I've been to church services where there was no, nothing. It was just like, this was a waste of time. And it had nothing to do with, mm -hmm. I guess, I don't say a waste of time. It was like, it is sad what is coming out of the pulpit. All right. That kind of, I can't believe that this is just so. It's empty. Empty, it's empty sounding to, to, to everybody. Now, I have had that. Not, ooh, how has everybody been? But not actually because of my own, if that makes sense, because of my own personal problems or, or animosities being all nice to everybody at church and then getting in the car and but then you get out, out of it and you're like this is this is why are we here why are these people right, here right. there's no if everybody comes together it's a reason there's a reason for the gathering and so there's an anticipation that okay we all gathered for something right like inside of you you're like Okay, we're all here together to hear, and there's nothing really said. I really don't know why that. It's like watching that. That um, we had one firecracker, one of the big ones that we found <laughs> that was left on Fourth of July last year, and your daddy and I were going to set it off. It had been rained know. on, but you know, it yeah. had the wrapping on it. It had the wrapping on it and everything it had been out on the porch, but we decided, well, we're going to light it. And we lit it and we stood back in anticipation and it went... <laughs> I mean, it was huge! And it just went... <laughs> <laughs> went over there and prodded it, tried to relight it, and nothing. 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 Do it in the fire. No, I didn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> didn't throw it in the fire. And I was videoing it. Do I was something. videoing it just knowing, okay, this is a joyful. This is anticipation. Anticipation, you know, and I had the fire right there and then of course the fireworks were supposed to go up. Yeah, if you'd had a video of you seen us running back going. <laughs> um, it was funny. But nothing. That's exactly the way that I have felt there? in a church service before. Yeah. The anticipation was there. I was ready to hear the word. And nothing. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, nothing. well, like but Dad said before, word. that it matters not who's saying it. If you have an open heart, you can still learn from what they're saying and being discerning. Sure, sure. And taking the parts and pieces from what they've said. Yeah. And applying truth to it, like my, you can still get nourishment from that. Right. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the you seeing everybody around you knowing for a fact. Everybody's yeah. Not everybody, but the majority is. Why, why are you here? What is the purpose behind you coming? Checking out the list. Check up a lot. Mm -hmm. Is not checking that block easier at home. I don't know how many times I've said that to the God team. That's probably why the youth group went from. <laughs> if you're not here to learn about God, I don't even know why you're here. I'm sure there's other things you could be doing right now. It's a lot funner. You know, but. Did not do that. Uh, but that's what I'm trying to get at. It's, it's not a carte blanche that everybody there is just going to hell. It's a. Yeah. But. The vast so, majority is. Anybody want to add to Todd's answer? Um, verse 12 says, Restore, bring me back to the joy of your salvation. Salvation, safety, welfare, prosperity. So that means while you're sinning and in your sin, if you haven't repented, you are just not joyful at all. Everything is just not okay. It's because harboring unconfessed sin, mm -hmm. 
there's no joy in it. And so if that you should be searching and looking through, okay, why am I not joyful? What am I not? You're mournful. Yeah, what am I not confessing? You're convicted. You're, you're mournful. You're not happy. Well, did, did you get anything else out of this 19 verses? I did. Let me hear the joy and gladness so that the bones you crushed, you, God, crushed, may rejoice. That is what I got out of it. God will crush us to bring us up back to himself, to restore us, just like we've read before. He is broken, and he will heal. But let me... A broken bone, life. whether it's a leg, a foot, or a wrist, it is. it's pretty hard to do anything with that appendage that's broken. Painful. Mm -hmm. It's painful. So what is he saying? Make me, make me make to me hear joy and gladness. Joy and, gladness. <coughs> and gladness in the bones you've broken. Now, God didn't literally break any of David's bones in the sin. He had a broken and contrite heart, which is a sweet fragrance in God's... See, it, it's just like your broken wrist. You couldn't proceed back to the life of normalcy until the broken bone is fixed, right. healed. healed. So what does what's the analogy then? You got unconfessed sin? You can't proceed and get things right with God mm. till that's taken care of. Thus you have Verse 13, right after verse 12, which was the focal verse. Restore unto me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with your free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors your ways and sinners will be converted unto you. Before David's confession of his transgression, he was in no place to do what? Teach others. To teach others transgressors about transgressing. Is that something Jesus said about a log and a speck? But see, upon true repentance, confession and repentance, David then was qualified to teach on it. See, some people who have been forgiven much will love much. They will. O oh Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth will show forth your praise. Proper praise to the Lord can't go forth unless you're in right relationship with Him and you are not harboring unconfessed sin. Thus why legitimate praise in church today is non-existent. It's a show. has nothing to do with what David is praising over here. When I hear verse 13, the, then I'll teach transgressors that ways, and sinners <coughs> shall be converted. I, almost, I hear the same thing as God's saying, um, 
for my name's sake, I will heal or restore you. It's almost David's like saying, like, for your name's sake, like, restore me. So that I can teach, so that your way will go forth. And he says down here, deliver me from blood guilt. When you transgress, you can cause others to stumble. And when you are restored, you know, you teach transgressors the ways of God. Yes. And, and soon as, in the early years of our marriage, as soon as we opened our mouth to Donna's sister and mom about our stance about certain things, what kind of testimony would we have had then if we wavered, compromised, and said, nah. Wishy washy. What would that have said to them? Yeah, it's like about to be blasted, you know, it's about to be like, Lord, if you don't restore me, I've said so much, I've, you know, I don't want your name to be blasted, do this for, I shouldn't have done it, I shouldn't have been anywhere close. I don't know, it just comes back to Jesus and all, it's just right back to the word of God. His witness, his testimony, it gets off of us himself. He's the author and finisher of our faith. So he creates in us a clean heart and he renews a right spirit in us. But and can, he knows it. It cannot be restored unless it has been broken. And that's not the fun part. But in the midst of it, there's joy. Uh can be. It's up to the individual. Mm -hmm. It's not written in stone that you will have joy. Behold, you desire truth in the inward parts and in the hidden part. You will make me to know wisdom. He who worships God must worship Him in spirit and in truth. The spirit is the inward part. David prays, don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Mm -hmm. Why? Because he knew he was on the verge of departation. It's just so weird because you'd think that this whole chapter would be full of, oh God, I'm so sorry for to Bathsheba, I'm so sorry for her husband. Oh man, how can I make it up to them? How can I, how can I, how can I? But it's like, against thee and thee only have I sinned. It. Where ultimately all sin is against God. It affects people, but it is against Him. And that's huge because we can get tangled up. Oh, how do I write this wrong? How do I people, 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 people? And then it's like scratch all that. If you go back to the Bible, it seems like the way to get right, it has nothing to do with people. And it's all, it's between you and God and you look to him and then he settles accounts. He bring, you don't, you don't need to freak out over wrongs, but you... I don't know. It's just astounding what what's conversed in the state that he was in here. It's totally not what I would think at first sight. Same way about forgiveness that we looked at a couple Passovers back. If he repents, forgive him. If he comes to you seven times seven and he repents, forgive him.
But the Torah tells us not, not to hate your brother. Don't be bitter against him if he doesn't repent. I think the church probably often has relational problems and then they don't even know the Torah or anything and so they can't even deal with those problems correctly. Because it doesn't apply anymore. And what they say. So sin, sin, simply put then, is nothing more than a departure from the way of God. It's, it's missing the mark. It's all it is. And if that's all it is, then Jesus can rectify it. Then, then he can, he's the one who can bring all things back together. There's nothing, oh wait, but I, what about this other thing, weird secret? No. He, he didn't come to change the Passover observance. He came to fulfill it and explain and reveal by his grace what all of that meant for those thousands of years. And as often as you keep on doing this, in my season, from year to year, you do show the Lord's death till I come. That, that was it, guys. And he warns the church at Cornwall, don't treat this common. Don't come to this table unworthily. You have its due and proper respect when you come to this table. Because some of you aren't doing it and you're sick and some of you's even died because of it. You know, as, 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 as far as me, this, this, ver this, this why this verse just means so much to me because I know what it was like before the revelation of the feast days. There's got to be more to this walk. Got to be. And as we begin to stumble in it, but walking nonetheless, and the revealing beginning to take place, it, it was just awesome. Because every time I, and you know, I'm, I'm sure that everybody's at a different place. Every time I sit down at the Passover meal, I hear Jesus' word, I have desired to keep this Passover this year above all Passovers with you. I hear him. for the revealing. Such an awesome gift. This plan for man's laid out. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. And we're the generation that will see the absolute fulfilling of one of them. Just as Paul or uh, Peter, Matthew, John 
saw the fulfilling in their generation of the Passover. Why? Why would they not be adamant when they got the revelation? Why would they not be excited to speak up? No, you don't understand. And Peter at Pentecost. You don't think the boy was not giddy beside himself that I know <laughs> because what did Jesus do with the Passover? Why would he not get it? Just following suit. Because he believed that he is the son of God. This is God. His son of God. And that's why the mindset that they truly believed then that the seven feasts were fixing to all get fulfilled. Why, did, why didn't they get the scripture in Daniel that knowledge will increase? Close it up. Don't apply to you. Just close it up for now. Because most of the disciples weren't alive when the revelation came to John mm. and he put pen to paper. Mm. There's probably some of them thought, my boy is going to live forever until Jesus comes again. Mm -hmm. Look at him. He's still alive still and kicking. Alive. Paul's gone. Peter's gone. All the rest of them brought them like flies. There's John. Anything else about Psalm 51 you want to share that you got? Well, I didn't. It, it was more of at the very end, it's a, a, a prophecy of what will happen. You know. And he says, in your favor, do good to Zion. Build up the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will delight in righteous sacrifices and hold our offerings. Then bulls will be offered on your altar. That is a prophecy of when Jerusalem, and when Jesus comes on Mount Zion. But how does that apply to you today about being a restored, a past well and a repair of the breach? Have we looked at? What you digging in over there? Me? Yeah. Rebuking and repenting. Luke seventeen three. What they actually mean? That brother trespass you, rebuke him. And if you repent, then forgive him. See what the work review comes. You mean it's none of our business? I thought it was none of our business.
says it can be a pointing out of wrongdoing without the convicting of sin. That is the to rebuke someone is not necessarily to cause them to com be convicted of sin. Correct. You can you you can you can do that at the point to where they're at step one or two, what we looked at in James, before it becomes sin. You can see it coming. The way down with heavy pressure upon them. That it. Fix the close. Tabernacles 2015 will soon be over. You ready for a season of darkness? in a different month. It's almost identically the same days of the week but a different month. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, this year it was May. April. March. It was in April? April. April. Yeah. Yes, because I couldn't have birthday cake. <laughs> she understood. She had to wait. <laughs> I bet you'll be in March. So it'll be March. By March. <laughs> no. May. You sure? Yeah, it was in April. Yes, it yeah. was definitely just the week of my birthday. Yeah, because we went to Cracker Barrel and she couldn't. Well, it's in April. It's in April. So you got October, November, December, January, February, March, April. Yeah, 22nd. <clears throat> the 22nd? Yeah. yeah. So it was at the beginning of April this year. So Six it was in April. Six months. It's on a Saturday. Same day. Same day of the week as it was this year. Yeah. And Pentecost, even in their calculations, is going to be on a Sunday again. Yeah. Two years in a row. I can never remember that happening. Huh. Father, we thank you for the time together, <clears throat> and we thank you for thy word is truth, and your truth is a shield. We thank you for all that you reveal to us, but we know that in your coming to us, that if we do not obey what we hear, then we get no more of you. So as many times the letters of the New Testament were signed off with may the grace of our Father and Lord Jesus Christ be upon you. I pray that for everybody here. <clears throat> but I know that it's conditional to where if you want to know more of God, then you have to start walking in what you've heard to do by God. So as they fine-tune their assignments and begin to run with all their mind, body, soul, and strength, I thank you for the crown of rewards. And my prayer is that they finish, finish strong, and without the smell of smoke on. To your praise and to your glory and to your kingdom coming. In Christ's name.